Hi there, this is Fiona with another Sign Trigger tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to go over how to create a collision audio system. Check the description below for useful download links. Be sure to get the latest version of the VRChat SDK and Sign Trigger. There's also a downloadable version of this prefab. Let me do a demonstration. So with this ping pong ball, as the ball changes velocity of impact, it changes the sound that it plays. So you can hear as the ball bounces lower and lower, the pitch of the sound uh, also goes lower and lower. A slightly more advanced version uses the velocity to pick from a selection of sounds. So for example, with this tennis ball, you can hear that there was different sound clips that were actually used, and then they also varied in pitch a little bit. Okay, let's learn how to build it. Let's start with our ping pong ball. What we need to do for this ping pong ball is first set it up as a pickup object. So we've got the VRC pickup script added, the VRC object sync added, that automatically adds a rigid body. Because I want it to bounce, I'm gonna go ahead on our sphere collider and make sure we've got a bouncy ball uh, physics material on there. Also make sure that our rigid body is using gravity and it's not kinematic. And then in our VRC pickup, let's make auto hold set to yes so that desktop users can throw it and we can also test it in editor here. Let's set up the logic now. So the, one of the things I want to control, obviously, is the pitch and relate that to how fast the ball is going. So let's add a float. And I'm going to call this pitch. We also need the audio source that plays our sound. And I'm going to call that impact audio. Go ahead and drag this in right now. Now, when we're changing the pitch of the sound, how much you can change it really depends on the sound clip. Some sounds are much more forgiving than others. I'm going to go ahead and give a minimum and a maximum pitch. So let's go ahead and set those floats. Min pitch. And just from trial and error, I found out that like about 0.75 seemed to be a good minimum pitch for that. And then the uh, max pitch. In this case, I'm gonna set that to two. And then we just need our multiplier. So I'm gonna make a multiplier and call it velocity factor. And that's gonna be a float. So let's add our collision event. So collision, on collision, enter. We need the rigid body so that we can get the velocity from it. So let's make that a variable. Rigid body, and I'm gonna go ahead and call it this rigid body. Um, another variable that we're going to need is a vector three to store the velocity. So a vector three tells you what, how much X, Y, and Z it's going. I'm gonna call this impact velocity. Um, but we don't actually need that. We just need the speed. So let's make another variable, which is the float. That's just actually the impact speed. So that's just the velocity without a direction. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing. So game object, get component. Let's get the rigid body off of there. So we know that we want it to be from this game object. And the uh, type that we need to type in here, the component, is exactly what's in these parentheses. So type that exactly. Capitals count. All right, so then we're going to store it in this rigid body. Now that we have this rigid body, we can get the velocity from it using the rigid body, get velocity component. So choose the variable and we're gonna store it in that vector three that we set up right here. Now that we've got that vector three, we can get from that vector three, get the magnitude. And that's going to be stored in impact speed. So now let's actually multiply our speed. So that's gonna be a float multiplication. So we know that our impact speed times our velocity factor is gonna be our pitch. And um, the velocity factor that I've started with through trial and error, I found 0.2 seemed to be pretty good. All right, now let's add that to our minimum pitch. So let's do a float addition. So pitch plus our minimum pitch and let's store that back in pitch, okay? The one thing we wanna do just to check here 
is, let's say our velocity was really high for some reason. We want to be able to make sure it never goes higher than the maximum pitch. So let's use a function called mathf clamp. And what we need to do here is pick the float version. So we say, hey, let's take pitch. If it is lower than this, set it to this. If it is higher than this, maximum pitch, set it to this. And then store it back in pitch. So let's take the audio source, set the pitch. Let's pick the variable from our list that we defined above here and then set it to this value, our pitch. And now let's actually play the sound. Play one shot. Same thing, pick the audio source. And then let's choose our clip. In this case, it's ping pong ball. This is the basic logic. It's all set up. I'm gonna add one extra little event. So I'm gonna do a little on pickup. All I'm going to do is just do an audio source, play one shot. I'll use that same audio source. And then this time though, I'm going to use a little sound called pickup, which is a very soft little hitting the hand sound. That one was fairly simple. The next one we're going to look at is the tennis ball. The way that we're going to set this up, you can have as many clips as you want and you can have one or you can have 50. The basic beginnings of this is gonna be very similar to the ping pong ball. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this component and I'm going to paste that component right here. Then let's just make sure that our audio source is the right reference. The difference between this ball and the other one is that instead of varying the pitch by velocity, we are going to vary the clip chosen by velocity. So let's go ahead and take out um, the velocity factor and the math that we did to determine the pitch because we're not going to do that this way. We're not changing the pitch. And so let's do a little refactor. I'm going to add an event and I call this a custom. All right. And this one is going to be get impact speed. On collision, I'm going to call this instead of doing all these things here. So let's go ahead and grab all those things and we're gonna drag it now into this action right here. But I do have a problem. Our impact speed, we're gonna need to have between different events. So I can no longer use it as a local variable. I'm gonna have to put it up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new, a new float up here. I'm gonna call this impact speed and I'm gonna delete this one. Now, when we delete this, Notice this one went orange. That's telling us that like I no longer have a reference. So luckily I can go back and put the impact speed that I moved up to the top right there and then it's happy. Now on collision enter, instead we can do a cyan trigger, send custom event, get impact speed. All right, and that's gonna be the first thing we do. So let's drag that up to the top. I'm gonna just go ahead and delete these from here right now. Here's where I'm gonna change these a little bit. I'm, because we're gonna using specific sounds and I'm gonna randomize the pitch just so that if you play the same sound over and over again, it doesn't get repetitive. So I'm gonna make these just a little more conservative. They're only gonna vary by uh, plus or minus 5%. Now we need to add the sounds we want to use. So that is going to be an array. So we're gonna make this a audio clip array. Array is just a list of, of objects. Okay, and we call this the impact. And in this case, the objects are audio clips. And I want there to be three of them. Let's see if I can find, so we've got tennis one, tennis two, and tennis three. Let's make sure that those are what we want. Let's go over to here. Let's listen to them. Tennis one. Tennis two and tennis three. Now we have to decide what is the range of velocities that we care about. So the minimum will be anything below that will always have the lowest sound and the maximum is anything higher than that will always have the highest sound. We're gonna specify those. So I'm gonna put in a float, I'll call this min speed and then another one. 
max speed. So that's the range that we're going to um, vary. And then finally, we need to have a integer that is the index that we use to pick a sound out of our array. Okay, so in that case, it's an int. I'm gonna call this speed index. Now that we have the impact speed, we're gonna take that value and figure out how to use that to pick one of these clips. All right, so let's add another event. And I'm gonna call this event get speed index. All right, so what I'm gonna do in this one is just a little bit of math. It's gonna take our velocity range, figure out where is the, the actual impact velocity fall along that range, find that value, then map that to how many bins we have in that range. So that's the number of sounds in our array. And then use that number to identify which bin and then pick it from our array to play. Within our get speed index, we are going to start with figuring out how many sounds that we have. So let's go ahead and make an integer variable. And this is going to be index size. And then let's get that index size. And we do that with our audio clip array. Audio clip array get length. And so let's choose there and then store it in index size. Now, the way that index size works in an array, it's going to count the number. So we've got three clips, one, two, three. So it's going to return a three. However, the way you reference an index, so if we go up here, this is index zero, this is index one, and this is index two. So we want to eventually get to picking a integer that is zero, one, or two. So in that case, we need to subtract one from this. So we're going to just do a little bit of subtraction here. Um, so that's going to be an integer operation because we're working on integers. Subtraction. So we're going to take the index size. We're going to subtract one and we're going to save that back in index size. We are going to need to turn that into a float because we want to use it in some of our math. And the way that you do that is so we're going to make a new variable, which is a float. And we just call this index size float. we use something called convert to single. All right, so convert to single and let's choose the right kind. So let's look in our list, see if we can find that one. Oh, there we go. Int in out float. Great, so we're gonna take our um, index size and then save that in index size float. Now we can use that float in float mathematical operations without, uh, without trouble. We have got the impact speed. We need to clamp that within our range. Remember that was mathf clamp. Choose the float version. So our impact speed. And let's clamp that between our minimum and our maximum speeds right here. Save that back in impact speed. So we're going to take that range, min speed to max speed we're going to find out at what point is our impact speed within that range. And so that's gonna be basically a ratio. Then we're gonna multiply it by the number of bins that we have, so the number of sounds. And then we're gonna turn that back into an integer to get our value back out. So now I'm gonna have a couple of little variables to store pieces of our math along the way. So I'm gonna make a float and I'll call this one speed range. And I'm going to make another one and I'm going to call the speed ratio. Right here, I'm going to just add a comment because when you're doing the sign trigger one math at a time, it kind of helps to have this in here. So in this case, here's what I want. My speed ratio is going to equal impact speed minus the minimum speed. Okay, so that's the how big is impact speed relative to the entire range, which is going to be the max speed minus the min speed. Okay, so that's just to give myself a little reminder of what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, so let's just start with our float math subtraction. So we've got our uh, max speed, and we're going to subtract our minimum speed. And we're going to store that in speed range. 
And now we're going to get the impact speed minus the minimum speed. Yep, let's do that right here. So impact speed minus the minimum speed and temporarily store that in speed ratio. Okay, so I have this piece, I have this piece. Now let's divide them. So that is going to be speed ratio divided by speed range. And then we're going to save that back in speed ratio. Now let's figure out how many bins we have and multiply them. So that's just going to be a little bit of float math here. So we have that ratio. And then we're going to multiply that by our index size float. That's why we made it floats before, so we could do this operation. And then we're going to save that again in our ratio right there, because why not? Now that we have that, we need to figure out which bin is this. We have to like round it down. And so we're going to do that with something called math F floor to int. All right, so it's going to take that number that we just, just that we just made and we're going to save that in speed index. Now, this is what we're going to use to look up which clip, 0, 1 or 2. I'm going to do a little belt and suspenders here just in case. I'm going to add another clamp to make sure we are never trying to call something outside of the size of our array. Okay? And that's just um probably unnecessary but I like to do it just to be sure. So we're going to make sure that speed index um, oop, starts at zero and then never goes above index size. Just a little bit of insurance there. So now we need to play our sound. So let's add an event. It's called play sound. I actually want to add a little bit of randomness just so that if you happen to play the same sound again and again, it doesn't get too repetitive. So let's go ahead and do a random dot range. And we're going to choose floats and we're going to pull from our minimum pitch that we declared above and our maximum pitch. And we're going to store that in pitch. All right. So now let's set our audio source to that, just like we did before. Set pitch. right here. Okay, so our impact audio, we're going to set it to that slightly randomized pitch. So now let's pick which clip we're going to play. So we're going to need a temporary variable to store that in, which is an audio clip. And call this impact clip. Now let's pick that from our array, which is just going to be audio clip array get. And so the audio clip array, let's first put that in right here. Oop, variable. And this is the index that we pick. So we've already defined that up here, speed index, and then we're going to save that in impact clip. Now let's play it. Audio source, play one shot, pick our audio source from our variables, and then pick the audio clip we just picked right there. So now we have our three customs, get impact speed, get speed index, and then play sound. So let's go back up to our collision. We've already got our get impact speed. I'm going to just duplicate these twice, expand them out so we can edit them. So we want to get speed index, do that one second, and then play the sound, do that one third. Okay, so now that our logic is all set up, we need to make sure that we've entered some values in here. So our minimum and maximum speed are right now both set at zero. Through a little trial and error, I think I found that like mm, 0.1 to 5 is the range that I want to go for. Let's try this out in editor. All right, here we are. Let's first try our ping pong ball. We have a sound when we pick it up. Definitely heard that pitch decreasing with velocity as it, as it dropped. Great. Now let's try our tennis ball. We should be able to hear distinct sounds with the speed of this one. So I'm going to throw it kind of hard at the floor here. 
Definitely heard some different sounds there. Throw it up. All right, seems to be working great. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.